everyone and welcome back to The Colour Cave where we like to play with art stuff. My name is Gem. Before we get started with today's video, it's Sunday. I've been deliberating for quite some time now but I've made a decision and I have decided to put up my original set of Prismacolor Premieres on the stash shop. This will be going up today. Um, the reason I wanted to talk about this is obviously because these are quite personal to me and these were the first set of pencils I had. Of the ones that I had used, uh, I got a bigger set pretty soon after I tried these. I have replaced the ones that have been used with open stock. So it is basically a new set of pencils. Um, as you can see, they're all, they're all in pretty good shape. So uh, I was thinking particularly about maybe one of you here in the UK. These pencils are really expensive to get hold of so if it's something you're interested in head over to the stash shop today and these will be listed along with a few other bits and pieces as well So we're here today to do something with our Artful box which is our quarterly subscription box that we received back in March so the items that we've got to play with, if we remember, was this selection of Tombow markers and these sort of twin tip fine liner doofery bobs that I was quite taken with. Twin tone pens, that's what they're called. So we've got quite a nice selection of colours here. We also got a Tombow Mono pencil, an HB and an eraser as well. So basically all the tools you're going to need to do something quite cool. The paper I wasn't so fussed on, but for the, the purposes of this video, I think it's only fair that we do something on this. Now, what struck me was in the comments under the unboxing video, which I'll leave a link to in the description and in the end card as well, in case you haven't seen it. I think pretty much the entire like population of the cave has seen that video. Underneath the video in the comments section, there was this uh, this preference towards whether people wanted me to do an illuminated letter or to do calligraphy or to follow the Fox tutorial that was in the in the magazine. So I think it was Nadia that had suggested that she would like to see the Fox tutorial perhaps with an illuminated F next to it. And I thought, well, why not combine them and just make an illuminated letter or an embellished letter that is a Fox? So that's what we're going to do today. That's been ruminating round in my little brain for about a fortnight. <laughs> I'm glad I'm finally getting the chance to do it. Righty ho ho. So... For this, I'm probably not going to use these, to be honest. I'm going to keep this little yellow one out. Um, I might come in handy, but I'm not going to have much use for these colours, which is a shame. But I am going to be using these in my sketchbook, in my personal time, because I like them. So this is the Smooth Bristol paper, and it is 250 GSM, so it is quite thick. <laughs> when I write the letter F in my own handwriting, which I see if I take my time, my handwriting's not bad. But if I write the letter F... It looks something like that. That would be that would be a capital F. And I figured that would be quite an interesting way to make this into a fox rather than using, you know, a, a standard F, you know, like a, a block capital kind of F. The first thing that I want to do with it is take this line out and give it a bit more of an angle. I'm sure most of you have figured out where where this is going already. You know, it's, it's fairly obvious what we're going to do with this. So what we need to do is we need to sketch in our shape. Now, one of the things about doing something like this is in order to keep the shape of the letter, you are going to have to sacrifice something in terms of proportions of whatever it is you're going to turn it into. So we may, we either have to have a slightly wonky looking letter F or a slightly wonky looking fox in terms of proportions. So I'm going to try and hit that right in the middle and hopefully it's not going to look too weird. But we'll keep tweaking it until such times as, as it doesn't look weird. So we're going to have his head up here. I don't even know what size I'm making things right at this juncture. And then this is going to be his little snout. Look. Oh. And then his jawbone comes up somewhere around here. Now I'm trying to keep my pencil strokes as light as possible. Uh, he's going to have to have some ears as well, isn't he? And then his eyeball is going to be somewhere in there. Uh, his nose is far too long, but we can come back and deal with that. This is what I'm saying. I just want to like map out first and then we'll try and figure out wonky proportions. This is going to be the shoulder joint. And this is going to be a paw of some description. Maybe not just quite like that. 
and then we're gonna have to have this back hip joint. Now sometimes it helps uh, to turn things on its side, you know, when you're thinking about proportions. I'm gonna put his hip joint in there maybe. Mm, yeah, okay, we'll go with that. Now I don't think I'm gonna take the back out quite as far as the tail of my F here. But let's uh, let's exaggerate this a little bit and then he's gonna have a little bit of a dip. And then that'll see the shoulder. <laughs> And we'll curve this down towards his hind quarters. Again, legs, we're gonna have to do a bit of work here. So we're gonna have to bring it, bring it this way instead. Now, dog legs or canine legs or fox legs, they're not the easiest things to draw. They're, they're you know, they're quite, um, quite complicated shape-wise. Now, I've got the, the, the joints right here, but in proportion to what's going on, it's far, far too short. So what I'm thinking to myself is I might actually move the hip joint up a bit. I might move it to here. That might actually be too far up. Let's try somewhere in the middle. Come on, Jem. And then obviously we've got the tail. I can work that out, but basically this flick in my F is going to be the end of his tail. So something like that. Okay, maybe not as exaggerated as that. Okay, I'm kind of, I'm happy with the length of the leg. So let's think about, uh, let's think about up here now. That's quite odd. That shoulder joint should be further forward. So again, just going to use some artistic license here. As long as there's something sticking out there, that's going to make it look like an F still. Although it's going to, by the time I'm finished, it's just going to look like a fox is standing up. But you guys know it's an F and I know it's an F. So let's move the shoulder joint to like here. So maybe he's paused there. Or maybe he's begging. And then obviously he's got a leg on the other side as well. So there's that. Oh, okay, proportion wise, I think bodily we're not too far off. Uh, we do have to do something about this massive wolf nose that he's got though, because <laughs> we can't have that. So we need to shorten this down quite considerably actually, because foxes are actually quite fine featured animals in the nose department. There's still um, a touch on the long side and it's not pointy enough. Now, I'm not really happy with this full stop and I'll tell you why, because I don't like the fact that it's straight across. I kind of want to shift the angle of his entire face. So his eyes gonna be in that direction. Okay, that's better. Still looking slightly wolfish, but we, 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 we shall work on that, work on that. He's uh, he's looking kind of thick as well. He's just as a, a bit of a, bit of a, a chubby fox, this. I haven't seen very many chubby foxes in my life. I don't know if some of the urban foxes are kind of chubby now because they're friends with everyone and people feed them. Um, but where I come from, foxes are, are not chubby. They're very, very much not chubby. Okay, uh, their their ears are quite pointy, but I've kind of taken a bit of artistic license with that because I, I, I kind I want to like the look of this. Okay, so we have we have sort of retained our F shape. Do you see what I mean though? It says there's still an F in there. You could draw an F in there, uh, but it basically looks like a fox in its back legs, but that's the fun of it. Because of the smoothness of the paper, it is actually um it is actually quite nice to 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 sketch on because the pencil just kind of like glides across it, which is which is cool. Messy, messy drawing. I actually find that when I take away a lot of my sketch lines, sometimes it it helps me see things better. That I, you know, there was just a mass of lines before. Uh, so this is something that I feel is quite quite helpful. Actually, is this process of taking away the messy sketch lines that you don't actually want. This is a great little razor as well. Okay, that's a bit better. At least I can see what I'm doing. Does still look like a wolf. Okay, so the other thing we want to do is put in these uh, these markings. So they've usually got, let's bring his mouth up a bit. So they've usually got like white somewhere around here and it kind of comes up around here. Not so much of a fatty. There we go. We're starting to look a bit more fox shaped now. And we're still F-shaped, which is good. I wouldn't use an HB pencil for sketching, especially if I was going to use inks that are water-soluble, which is what we're going to be doing. Um, I'm going to refer back to the magazine in just a moment. Okay, fabuloso. So I don't know whether he's jumping or I'm saying that if he's begging and he's broken his feet if he's standing like that. Okay, so uh, one of the things that was in the magazine that I was most pleased about, and plus it's a really, really cute illustration as well. Here we go. Um, this lady called Becky who's very talented and she has this lovely art style, it's very cutesy, um, I really like this. We're going to kind of take a few things from her tutorial, not her style obviously, um, but just some of the techniques she talks about and she waters down both the black and the orange at various stages in order to get these lovely sort of softer gradient effects. So we're going to do a bit of that. The other thing that she does that I like because, I well I do it too, is she goes back in with the pencil at the end to put in detail and that 
that's something that I quite enjoy doing. Uh, it just sort of like it takes me back to the fact that I'm, I'm clearly a pencil monster at heart. And I would rather put in detail with a graphite pencil than I would with a fine liner. But that's uh, that's just me. Okay, I've also got, uh, right, so I've got my palette. I've got a little uh, number two. This is the synthetic sea white size two. Uh, I think I was going to say I've got some of these in the shop. I don't know if there's any size twos left, but I like these little paint brushes for things like this. And uh, just the water brush, the Kuretake water brush. I've been using these quite a lot in the last few videos, so you all know what this is about too. So first things first, I am going to take the the orange pen. Oh, do a little bit of that in there. Um, so for the wash, I'm going to use uh, my Winsor Newton Cotman size eight. I don't want a brush that's going to pick up too much water because this paper wasn't really designed for it. Just going to start with basically the orange areas. <laughs> How imaginative, Gem Gem. And then when it comes down to this area where his is going to start to go into white. I'm just going to take what's there and just sort of flick it up. Now obviously we're going to have to wait for that to dry. Okay so one of the things that Becky did in the tutorial was she watered down the black. Grab a pipette. Now when you do this it's always an idea to test out your dilution on a scrap of paper before you start going hey hey willy nilly with things. Um, you know, that's quite important. So, uh, my sketchbook is off to the side here. So we'll, we'll, um, we'll use that. And, and one of the techniques she did was, she, with the paws, she watered this down and then sort of graduated it out. So that's kind of where we're going with this. Up his little legs. Like so. Okay, so with my teeny tiny brush now, it's little size two, I can go in at his ears. And we can also start marking in other areas. So this kind of part round his chin here. And start making him a little bit hairy. Because <laughs> I want I want this kind of like main part to be quite... Well maybe make him slightly less hairy down his belly. <laughs> Interesting to see how far that travels actually. Considering we're not on watercolour paper. Now we seem to be fairly dry here. Okay so we're going to go in and give him his eye now that this is dry. Because that gives us an area to work round. Handy having the little bullet tip to do that. Okay, now this is where it gets fun. I suppose we better give him a nose as well, hadn't we? I'm never entirely sure about noses like this because I always think if you make them square, they look a bit strange. And then if you don't make them square, they look strange as well. Okay, so I'm happy with kind of like the base color that's going on now. And this is where the fun really starts because you can layer these up so, so, so well. So the first thing that I want to do is start with the tail. And this is where my water brush is going to come into play. Now we've got this lovely brush tip as well. So just where it comes out from in behind his hind leg, I want to really darken that part down. And then with this water brush, we can really start to blend this out as per Becky's instruction. Now the beauty of using a water brush for things like this means that you can build up the layers but they're not you're not saturating the paper, so especially when it's not meant to be that that type of paper, you know, that's quite handy as well. So up on his ears here, I think I want to have them darker down here. Some flex. I'm trying to think about texture as well. And I, I you know I'm a big oh I'm a big fan of the flicky motion. Handsome already, we've only just started. <laughs> um, I think I actually might want to put a little bit of violet in here as well, just to make things a bit more, you know, a bit more interesting. I do remember that we established that the grey didn't do as much as we hoped it would do. So I think I'll grab some of my diluted black instead. Still wet, need to wait. So I've got the uh, this yellow fine liner that's not a fine liner. I keep, I keep calling it a fine liner, it's the twin tone markers. And I can just use this lighter. Because it's like a chrome yellow, it's not orange and it's not yellow, it's just somewhere in the middle. So we'll maybe stick a few of those down in there. Just do this very gently. Now this grey is quite delicate again, I'll wait for that to dry. I'm so impatient today, what is, what's wrong with me? So because this leg is in shadow, I'm going to put a tiny bit of black in there. And then I'm going to start to pull it out very gently. And it'll come, it'll come. And we can build that up ever so slowly. Okay, so now that we've got this all dry, we can go back in with our orange in wash form. And we'll do his little legs and his arms. His arms. I'll talk about the front ones, they're the arms. And just sort of feed that round into the grey area. 
Oh, I think I've got a pip here stuck in my paint and I'll leave it to dry and then pull it out. It's ridiculous, honestly. The joys of having dogs. Okay, so for this belly section, I want to take a look at this. I know I'm jumping about a lot, but it's just so that I can leave other areas to dry. This is going to be significantly darker down here. And then we can just graduate this out. Just soften that up a little bit. Yeah, it was, it was a pip here. <laughs> I remember thinking about his little face as well. His little face. Now I'm going to try with the grey. I don't know how well this is going to work if I'm honest. But they've usually got us almost like um, like eyeliner. And then that gives us the opportunity to work. You know, we've got an area that we can kind of like work around then. Yeah, so I'm just joining his tail to his back there. And then we can start to build up some colour round round his leg here. Again, we'll just graduate that out. So I'm trying to think about the curvature of the thigh here when I'm doing this. You know, so like following that round. Now this part in here, that is going to be his hind leg. So again, we'll I'll dilute it out slightly, but it's going to be in shadow. So we're going to add some grey to that or diluted black to whichever way you want to look at it. Now I just want to do this a section at a time. So I'm not deliberately trying to get rid of all of my brush strokes there, but I'm just wanting to soften them out a little bit. I do want to have quite a hairy fox. Um, the, the example that Becky has done for us in here, he's pretty smooth. Um, I think it adds to his cuteness. <laughs> But I think, uh, I think my fox is going to be probably a little bit wilder. Why am I not surprised? <laughs> okay, so back down to the tail now. And I'm using this diluted black just as a bit of a shadow. Now when it comes to his muzzle, I want to keep it quite smooth. So in that instance, it's better to be using the, the brush. So I've just mixed in a tiny, tiny spot of that diluted black here. And this is just for like round his eye area. So you can see how gradually I'm doing this. I'm just kind of like working my way around the picture in various places. Just sort of like, I've like kind of like meandering my way around. <laughs> it's most enjoyable. So I do want to have a little bit of a darker pot at the very, very bottom. And the same thing as before. I'm just doing this very gradually. And as we go round, you can see I can dilute it out there. So we can do the same with this front paw here. So if I bring this round here, I absolutely love the brush tips on these pens. Much as I'm not really a fan of ink pens like this, the I do appreciate a good brush nib. And uh, the brush nib on the, these are really, really nice. So we'll follow around that eye area that we were just doing there with the grey. Now this neck area is always a good place to stop, you know, if you're going to do things in sections. So we'll blend that forward into... The head there like that and then we can just start working away here okay so down to the leg now and the same thing we can start putting in just a little bit of this and that here and there now i want these to be fairly obvious so i'm not going to blend them out a whole lot i'm just going to soften the lines rather than trying to get rid of them now you can see i've deliberately left a line there and it's just so we can see the shape of that back leg so that is intentional that was fully, fully intentional. I'm taking this watered down black again. Just want to fill that in too. Again, we'll probably do another layer because that's part of the hind leg. It's not part of the tail. And we can join this up now down here. So I'm deliberately using slightly shorter and thinner strokes in this bottom area beside the rib cage. Um, naturally, these hairs tend to be shorter just because of where they are on the body compared to what's along the back. They're maybe not even shorter, they're maybe just finer. Again, get that curvature in and we can blend this out into the rest of the elbow joint. Yeah, we're starting to look a bit more like a fox now. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna put a little line and this is where the brush tip comes in really handy. Just a very, very thin line and then I'm gonna blend it out along the top here. And again, having a, a really fine brush pen's handy for this too. Okay, we've got this back front, front paw, back front paw, the, the, <laughs> the um, his arm, we've got his arm to do here. <laughs> so I'm just using the wee brush for this as well. And again, it's in shadow, so it's going to be a little bit darker. So we'll get that little first coat of that down and we'll deal with that just shortly also. Okay, so I get, just with what's left on the brush there, I'm just kind of... Adding in a few details here. Get that hairy chin chin on the go. And I'm also going to use this to draw in very thin 
line for his mouth. So now if we start thinking more about the detail, we're going to start with the tail here and I'm going to water this down again. This is just the black and I actually prefer it to the grey. And again, in a similar sort of vein to what Becky has provided in the tutorial. Very fine lines. Just to add a little bit of extra-ness to it. I'm going to try and fix this back foot a little bit. We'll just accentuate where the line's supposed to be. So you can see I'm taking advantage of the, the very fine tip on this brush. And this is just the ink that I've got on the brush. I've just swiped it onto the palette here and literally just tiny little mark. Now I'm going to do the same on this foreleg, forepaw, foreshoulder. Don't even know what I'm talking about anymore. The arms, these arms. <laughs> I'm feeling that this needs to be darker in here, so I'm just going to run a huge line of that along there and get in with the water brush. Okay, he's looking fairly foxy, to be fair. Now, this is my favourite part, and as I say, it's why I like Becky's tutorial, and that is just to go in and add in anything that you want to add, and I love doing this in pencil. Like, it's, it's one of my favourite things. So again, round these eyes, just like a little extra line here and there. And adding all these little touches, this is really what makes it fun and really, you know, just sort of not lets you make your mark. That's the wrong thing to say, but I don't know. It just, just gets you where you need to be sometimes. And always, if you add in a little highlight for the eye, oh, oh. And I can go back with this twin tip as well. And just down these bottom edges. As this has got a bit more of an illustrative feel as well, I would normally f outline this in black, but in the absence of, of having a fine liner, because one didn't come in the kit, I'm going to do it with a pencil. And it doesn't necessarily need to be all the way around. You can see there, just by using a broken line, you're still getting a little bit of definition and it's not overpowering the way sometimes a fine liner can be, especially in this area down his chest. I don't want to take away from that too much. And the beauty of it is as well, there's a few messy sketchy lines left and I can just take them away. Okay, I think we better ground this little guy as well. He's kind of, uh, we'll make him look as if he's jumping just by putting in this little shadow here. Oh, goodness me. I see my Posca has melted into the ink as well, so I'm just going back over that. Sometimes that happens and you need to go over it a couple of times. That's quite uh, quite normal. Okay, so there you have it. And now, as I originally suggested, um, <laughs> what began as an F doesn't look much like an F anymore, but you guys can see it because I have started that way. And there you go. So that is an illuminated letter, but not really because it's kind of a fox. So I'm kind of a foot in both camps and it's probably the closest thing I'm going to get to lettering. Anyway, uh, this is really, really, really good fun. I've really enjoyed it. Um, I find things like this really, really therapeutic. How many times can I say really? And uh, this has been really, <laughs> it's been very relaxing today. Very relaxing indeed. I've just found some more pencil lines that I don't want. Get out. Anyway, I hope you've enjoyed uh, this little jaunt this afternoon. I've just seen something else as well. <gasps> this is me all the time, isn't it? I'm like this all the time. It's like I start talking and then I see something. Okay, stop, 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 stop. So there is Mr. Fox. If you want to give him a name, let me know in the comments. And as you can see, despite not being much of a marker person, these are really, really good markers. I'm not going to be keeping a hold of these. I'm going to put these into the stash shop at some point. Someone will get much, much better use out of these because they'll literally just sit in a, in a cupboard or a box with me. And I would rather someone have them that actually needs them. Um, I hope you are inspired to try something with water soluble ink or with tombos or maybe even just draw a fox because it's good fun once again a great use of the artful box i have a feeling i'm going to return to this box again in terms of perhaps using these twin tones for something but i'd quite like to have a mess about in my sketchbook just on my own first because again it's something i'm not really familiar with i'll maybe come up with a couple of ideas and save that for a, a future video so that's it for today guys thank you very much for watching as i said i hope you've enjoyed yourself i certainly have most definitely i have actually and uh, we shall see you back in the cave on thursday for another video so until then please stay safe everyone take care of each other and bye bye for now